Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. It's November 9th, 2020, and we're here to tell you our favorite crowdfunded board gaming projects in this video of Kickstarter Pickstarter. If you're looking for another big dungeon crawl co-op game with miniatures, Steamforged Games has you covered with their new title, Bard Sung. In this one, players are working together to travel across various maps made up of various tiles and fight monsters and escape from the dungeon that they're in across a campaign while leveling up their characters. This one does a few things that they intend to set it apart from other titles in this genre. Uh, the map is not fixed, so each scenario will not have a setup for you to place out the different tiles in a specific order. Instead, as you progress, you will be placing those tiles uh, and rotating them or arranging them as you see fit, uh, depending on how you want to progress through the dungeon. So you're trying to make it to the exit, but along the way, you might want to take different paths to avoid certain dangerous areas or to explore that will be less optimal than simply going from point A to point B in a direct line. And as far as combat goes, uh, your characters and monsters are going to be fighting in what are known as zones on the board. Certain areas will be marked as zones, and those will determine uh, how you can affect your teammates with power-ups or buffs or which enemies you're able to affect with attacks. And you're also taking part in a progression system with your characters, and you're able to do that relatively free form. You have different stats, and as you play, you'll be able to advance whichever of those stats you're looking to advance. So maybe you have a strength build or a charisma build or whatever it is, the types of stats you might expect to see in your typical fantasy role-playing setting. The game is called Bard Sung, uh, and that's because you are the heroes the bards are singing about, so you don't get to actually play as the bards. Maybe there's a bard class in there, I'm not sure. Uh, but in general, it's one of those big fantasy co-op, rar, we're all getting in there and fighting things and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, there are, you know, a few things that I just highlighted that I think set this one apart from the bunch. For me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm highlighting it now because I think this is going to be a big popular Kickstarter and a lot of people are going to be looking at it and thinking about it. These types of games tend to do very well on Kickstarter. I don't know that my appetite for the dungeon crawl co-op game is nearly as strong as it once was. I feel like, you know, they say this is a campaign with over 50 hours of content. And to me, that sounds almost more like a punishment than it does a, a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, uh, you know, it could be a good game. I, I don't know that I have fully seen, they don't have a full rule book up yet. It hasn't become clear to me exactly w what makes this one really special compared to your Gloomhavens, your Madaras, and all the other things that are out there. I really like the idea of the bo bit more of a, like a roguelike exploration with a dungeon. And also I think that actually makes sense because I imagine the bard being like, and then they open the door and turned left. <laughs> like you're sort of just mm -hmm. winging the song as you go. <laughs> and yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot more of these large campaign games that I think the advertisement is you buy, even though you're spending a lot of money, you, well, that one purchases that huge hours for one game. And the challenge really is because compared to other games, you know, let's say you had something that rival, something that rivaled Pandemic, you might be able to fit a couple more of those on your shelves when a Gloomhaven in this, each one eats up a lot of time by themselves. So it's harder to get people who are already interested in one and the other. Yeah, yeah. Well, there could be people, some people who are just craving more of those. They don't care how many hours it takes. They want them all. Or someone who hasn't jumped on board any of the other ones and wants something new. And uh, to your point about the the board and the randomness of it, that's also a benefit for setup. It doesn't take as long to set everything up because you're kind of creating the layout as you go. So maybe this one will play a little bit quicker, at least initially. If you're interested in Bardsung, you can take a look at the Kickstarter for yourself. $99 will get you that core box, plus whatever Kickstarter exclusive stuff they come up with. Kapow is a superhero dice game when a hero will take on a villain and see who can be the strongest in a duel of wit and rolling. In this game, you will roll dice of different colors as well as one customizable die. You'll first roll them behind a screen and each player will assign them to their board of their specific hero or villain depending on who you're playing as. 
some dice will have different abilities, and there's usually a general ability of like, the red ones are better for attack, while blue is better for upgrade. While that custom die though is where it really shines because at the start, you'll really only have one side that does something. However, you will be able to purchase sides for that dice or even buy more customizable dice. Meaning that if you play with someone, for example, that really is all about going all out on attack, you can make those dice very aggressive. Or maybe you need something a bit more defensive, you can do that as well. This game is designed with two core sets, and of course these core sets have a mixture of heroes and villains themselves. There is also an alternate mode where you can actually do a 2v1 against a big bad supervillain. So if you really want to get some more combination and teamwork there, which makes sense for the heroes, you can do that as well. This is actually for a second edition of the game compiled. The first edition was from Two Ton Porcupine. This one's from White Wizard Games, the same people who brought you Star Realms. Though this is not a card game, this is a much bigger lot of dice. And in fact, not only did we interview them about this game back in PAX 2019 when we still were able to meet up, we have a review for the first edition of this game. And we really liked this game a lot. It was a lot of fun to roll your dice and you customize your not only your dice pool, but those customized dice. And I highly suggest you take a look at this one if you do like those two-player games or the hero theme. It, that It just felt like it really stuck out to me, and I really enjoyed this. I'm glad it's getting a, a new edition with some new heroes and some old faces from the first one. Yeah, um, it, wa it was a really fun game. It has some really unique stuff in it. Being able to change your dice as you go is a cool idea. Uh, it's a pretty quick playing two-player game that always doesn't feel like it's too luck-based, even though it's all about dice, and that's usually what comes with that territory. I'm interested to see exactly uh, what the new changes and tweaks and things they have for the new edition are. I saw that they will come out eventually with a conversion kit, so you can use stuff from the first edition with the second edition. So uh, that's, that's always a nice little bonus to add in there if you're someone who already did buy the first game. Yeah, I read that, and I wasn't 100% sure because it sort of sounded like it was almost just rules, not component pieces as much. But we'll, of course, see in the end. It does sound probably include some of the heroes that I didn't rec or villains, sorry, they're both, that I didn't recognize uh, from yeah. the core set. So I assume that would be the kind of pack thing. Either way, regardless, I'm a big fan of it. This is definitely one that actually probably will stand at least a very good chunk of time of the my culling of collections. It's still on my shelf, and I'm very happy to have it. Uh, if you're looking to get either of the two volumes, each of them are $45, and you can get both of them together for $89. My next pick is called Crack the Code. This one is from Indie Boards and Cards, and this is a cooperative deduction style game in which you're trying to figure out uh, what your code is while other players are trying to figure out their own codes, and you're trying to help each other out. The way it works is you have a set of colored marbles and a specific card that's telling you what colors of marbles and in what order you want to have in front of you. However, you cannot see that. Everyone else can see that. You cannot look at your own set of marbles. You have to look around the table and try to help other players uh, via the use of these cards in the center that will allow you to take various actions, such as uh, moving some marbles around of certain colors in different ways, and ultimately trying to get everyone sorted correctly. And the idea is that you're all hackers and you're trying to crack a code, but <laughs> I think that theme maybe is lost a little bit uh, in all the colorful marbles and things. This is uh, one that you could most obviously compare to the game Hanabi uh, in that you can only look at other people's hands, so to speak, and not your own. Or, or even something like Mastermind, where you're trying to figure out the correct placement and order of how the different colors go and different symbols or whatever it is, different variations of, of that type of game. Uh, I really like that idea. Also, I loved in, uh, what was that game? Gizmos from Come On, mm -hmm. where that also had marbles. <laughs> Anything with marbles is just fun. Uh, we that's need just, more marbles. <laughs> it's a fun game component. Uh, and the other thing that's interesting about this one, it sounds like, a, to me, a fun puzzle-style co-op game on its own. It also comes with uh, scenarios, including like a solo mode and even a, a light sort of campaign style game with different boxes you'll open up with new challenges as you progress. So uh, it's a little bit deeper than maybe just that basic gameplay might imply. Wow. I mean, the puzzle mode just sounded fun. I love those games. Like you said, Hanabi, actually, the one that came to mind for me was that Letter Jam. Yeah. Uh, but that style, because I feel like you always get great moments from that. You know, <laughs> you're like, oh, you know. 
<laughs> but that extra campaign stuff, I think, really ups it because that makes things a lot more interesting in terms of like having that own solo mode of solving puzzles. And, you know, some people, I know these games can be hit and miss for some people. So if you have someone at the table who doesn't like it, well, you still got solo mode for yourself. Yeah, there you go. Something to, something to work your brain a little differently by yourself or in a group. You can pick up Crack the Code for just $24 right now on Kickstarter. Elements of the Gods is our next pick here. In this game, you play as, well, gods fighting over power in this new world. The way the game works is there will be a board covered with little meeple. Now, these meeple are of different colors that have different abilities, such as gardeners or, or worshippers. But the idea is they're not belonging to one specific player. You're each going to manipulate them and have them try to worship you on your turn. The way you're going to do that is there are these elemental statues that you're going to place around the board. Each one has different effects, such as the fire making all the meeple move away from the fire, the water moving everyone towards it, so on and so forth. On your turn, once you place one of these things, you'll be able to move the meeple around and play cards from your hand, whether it's to build up garden spaces to get more points or even build up structures that for them to worship you with that will help give you more power over the land. And of course, maybe even make some sacrifices to eternalize yourself among the worshipers. This is a game that is very interesting because it's all about moving those pieces that are sort of shared amongst everyone and mani manipulated in the way that helps you, but maybe isn't giving your opponent too much uh, resources for them to move around. And of course, you will be sharing those elemental pieces I mentioned before as well. So this really is a weird game about sharing everything, but also being the one who gets everything in return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like uh, that concept. I like games like uh, War of Whispers, where every everyone is moving around the same stuff, but for different reasons and trying to make it work specifically for them so you can uh, maybe help or hurt people without realizing it. Uh, I think that's cool. And, and, you know, just the concept in general of it, there should be I, I want a game like this where you're ruling over a bunch of meeples. They're they're perfect for that. They're they're little peons for you to, <laughs> you know, play with and <laughs> make do your bidding. That's what they are. That's what they do. Hmm, uh, that 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 worries me a little bit, Jonathan. Though. What, you think I'm power hungry? I'm, <laughs> I'm a crazy person? No, it's good. It's a good thing. But I do love the fact that you you will have to share and think about the placement of the meeple. Like if I see that Jonathan's going for the strategy of a lot of gardens, I'm like, I should move all the uh, green meeples away from his stuff if I can. And that I, that's an extra moment because you want them too. So you don't want to just kill everything, but you got to try to work on that placement. If you are interested in becoming a god and worshiping meeples, and in no way is this a power hunger fantasy, you can get this game for $49. My next pick is called Four Humors from Adam's Apple Games. This is based on the idea of the four humors from back in the old medieval times. You know, there's the bile and the blood and whatnot and how they relate to the human body. And you are playing as doctors and you have to assign different uh, medicines relating to one of these humors to different people in a medieval kingdom. But you are competing with the other players as to which of those medicines is going to work best for them. The way it works is on the field, there are going to be portraits of these little people, and inside of them is a spot for one of your tokens. Uh, and that token will show multiple of the different types of humors. Uh, so maybe it shows just two of them. You have to choose one of those two and put it there. But you're going to be doing so face down, and other players will be putting their tokens onto different characters in the same area, also face down. And once they are revealed, who chose what is going to determine uh, who gets control over that area. So each humor has a different way of scoring. One of them is if there is just exactly one of that type, then you are the winner. Uh, one of them is if both players uh, put that same type, then you both get to share victory together. Uh, or another one might be having more than everyone else, for example. So it's a bit of a take on the prisoner's dilemma. However, there are four different types of humor, so it's not as simple. There may be more factors going into it. As another example, one of the humors is simply, you win if all the other ones failed to meet their conditions, and, you, and that humor was there too. That one just <laughs> gives you the win by default, which I think is kind of funny. And you are trying to complete personal goals, so it might be like um, taking control of four areas and the corners of the map or that are connected to each other. And if you've completed enough of those goals, 
you will win the game. Uh, it's a cute, funny little idea that involves some, uh, you know, that prisoner's dilemma thing that I think is always entertaining. Uh, we, I don't think we see it too often in games with a little bit of the this hidden worker placement element kind of like uh, Lock Up from uh, Thunderworks, the role player game uh, that makes it so you have to keep an eye on your opponents, try to deduce what they're going to do and when, keep you on your toes kind of thing that I enjoy. Uh, I know that I like games that are very scientific because I know this has not been proven to be false at all. We still use this method to I do. But uh, I, I'm a little... Is this more than two players? Yes, it does go up to more okay. than... It's more than two players. There'll just be uh, different areas uh, simultaneously. So, um, like, maybe in one area, only two people are competing for it. But somewhere else, you're competing with someone else or two different people are somewhere else. Gotcha. So, yeah, there's there's multiple places going on. Um, I, it definitely sounds interesting. Like you said, the prisoner dilemma and also keeping track, especially, like, the one you mentioned earlier, The if you're the only one there with that particular uh, humor, because mm -hmm. then you're like... Uh, have they played theirs yet? Let me see. I th I, right, well, right. <laughs> it's 50 50 chance now. <laughs> yeah, and then there's another thing with that one where they might, you can retreat and like you maybe you'll, maybe you won't win that area, but you'll take an adjacent one. So there's some interesting stuff going on. Uh, you can try it out for yourself. It's $30 if you want to back it. Uh, there's also a deluxe edition if you want to spend a little more. Our final Kickstarter goes out to all those dungeon masters or miniature war gamers who really love to have this giant environment set up, but it's very hard to buy all the pieces and paint them all. Upzone is all about providing that sort of environment, but in a very simple, quick method. These are in essence like pop-up books, which you will unfold and open up to provide different environments. The ones they show is like a destroyed cathedral or a pyramid that actually has it inside that you can take the py uh, pyramid cover off of and show the inside of the pyramid and really provides these beautiful areas in a very simple method that doesn't require painting. And as you can see, if you look at the Kickstarter, these uh, structures can support plenty of large miniatures. I love this idea because I already have plenty of board games that while they don't need environments too much, have a lot of miniatures in them and those take up a lot of space. So I can only imagine if you need plenty of castle walls or destroyed buildings for those games. The idea of being able to sort of fold these up, so to speak, and put them on a, in essence, a bookshelf could be a great uh, time saver and space saver that I think if you're into those kinds of games, you really need to look at this. Yeah, I think it's an, it's an awesome idea. They look really, really good and they don't look, you know, cheap or papery or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, of course, people will always have a soft spot for having the full plastic thing and painting it and making it exactly the way they want it to. But in terms of, like you said, saving space, saving you on time and just having it look good right out of the gate, this, I feel like in a lot of ways, for if you're, you know, a lazy person like me, would could replace those more traditional styles of, of environments for those kinds of games. Well, and not even on a lazy sense. Hypothetically, let's say that I really wanted to show you if I had the time and money to have a nice Warhammer collection to play with you, but I wanted to need to visit you. Taking the miniatures is enough, but instead of taking the entire landscape as well, I just take a couple of these folded up books. So that also makes your game a little bit more transportable, which is really nice. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I just, like you said, you could already have a big collection train or you really want those, but this is something at least take a look at. Cause I feel like it's, just such a great idea and can be very helpful, especially if you already have a huge budget already towards your collection of miniatures and whatever else you need for your armies. Now, each set comes uh, is for $100, but that's a whole table's worth, in essence, of a terrain type. So if you wanted the ancient Egyptian set or the destroyed cathedral, it will get you that. Plus, there's some Kickstarter exclusives of some cool black and emerald green gl glowing because this is from everything Epic Games, so it's got to have that extra fancy mythic version of it. Those were the kicks that we picked this week. Uh, one or two pretty big ones in there, uh, among some smaller ones as well that I always enjoy getting to highlight and see what those are like because, you know, Kickstarter, it's good to have it for the actual indie companies as well, <laughs> uh, in addition to the big established publishers that we also like to talk about their games too. Let us know in the comments. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> uh, like most of them were companies we regularly know at this point. I was really surprised. Like, you know, we're just looking at ones that caught our eye or we think are very big and it just happened to be the case in this year, though. 
maybe that'll be a trend for future Kickstarter Pickstarters. I think it's often the trend these days. Yeah, it's <laughs> becoming more and more that way. But if there's something that we missed or if you're backing one of these you're excited for, we want to hear you talk about it in the comments section. Uh, let us know what you're looking at on Kickstarter this week. Until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Kickstarter Pickstarter. Catch the latest from Roper Crypt by liking and subscribing, and don't forget to support us on Patreon. Don't get analysis paralysis, just click those buttons, help us out!